uh, just going to give a little overview of our autonomous boat concept. And what I have behind me right here is our prototype, which uh, basically we've just thrown together some existing hulls. We already had some other boats mixed and matched just to uh, try out the overall concept. And basically what it is, it's a trimaran. You've got one long central hull and then two outrigger hulls. In the final boat, the outriggers will be smaller than this. They don't need so much buoyancy. But uh, basically, we just wanted to check it out for performance. And the reason why we have this configuration, um, having the armor set so far back, is uh, it'll actually, um, we have a, a self-writing system in Vision, which I won't be getting into now. But uh, this, this overall shape and configuration allows having a large deck. So we're going to have a, it doesn't have the deck right now. We're building that next week, but it's going to have a large deck over the whole thing, which is going to have the solar array. So basically, it's going to be a slippery form, as in it's going to move easily through the water, have a lot of surface area in order to um, have the solar panels, and it'll be self-writing and seaworthy, as we're describing for. I'm just going to show you the propulsion system we have here, the underwater profile, and uh, basically we've just got a cheap uh, 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 trolling motor. Just right now, we're going to later have a, a custom brushless motor, but just to check out some of the uh, hull concepts. But you can see with the actual um, uh, uh, profile that we have of the the, um, the keel is meant to do uh, a number of things and. Basically, the, the number one thing is protecting the propeller and the rudder. So basically, when seaweed comes along or ropes or anything else, it will get pushed down. And we also have, um, I'll show you in a bit, but a, a fin that goes out both sides of the propeller. So the propeller basically is completely protected with this. As you can imagine, if you're running over a branch or a stick, it's just going to run like that and uh, miss the propeller altogether, especially when it has the additional fin going on. Like I said, this is not the propeller we're using. Now the, the uh, rudder, you can see back here, it's uh, built into the whole unit. And it's not the most effective style of rudder. Of course, having it going down farther is uh, going to be more effective in the turning. Um, but it is completely protected. So again, when seaweed comes along or anything else, it's not going to snag up in that rudder. And that's the uh, sort of balance we're trying to achieve. To have the um, efficiency, but at the same time, not to the point where things are getting snagged. One of the biggest issues with autonomous boats, there's been 27 attempts to cross the Atlantic, is getting snagged up in things. Fishing nets, seaweed, often they don't even know what it is, but when you look at the profile of the uh, boat before they go, it's quite obvious that it will be very vulnerable. This is uh, probably the least vulnerable system that's ever gone in the water as far as uh, having appendages that can snag in seaweed. And that's something that we spent a lot of time researching. But at the same time, we don't want to create too much drag. And so you can see we've got these structural components. And this is not exactly how it's going to be later. But we're tweaking everything, just seeing how it all goes. It'll actually be a little bit longer, a little bit deeper, so the propeller has more clearance between the hull and this uh, lower part, just for uh, greater efficiency. So it'll come down a little bit farther. But the second thing we're trying to achieve with this is, of course, lateral resistance. Now, when we're crossing the Atlantic Ocean, uh, it's gonna, the, we're going to have 80% um, of the time, 80 to 90% of the time, the winds are going to be behind us. It's in a 100, 180 degree arc uh, that's aft of you, um, the wind will be blowing from. So by having a very good center of effort, even though it's not a sailboat, having a center of effort and the quite a bit of lateral resistance properly balanced, it will really assist with uh, having the boat going um, downwind. So uh, there will be a bit more windage than what you see here because we do have part of a structure that's going to be part of the self-writing mechanism. So that will catch wind and since it's creating windage and since the winds are in your favor, this will allow us to really maximize the wind effect. But of course the main propulsion uh, or the primary propulsion is the uh, electrical system which is going to be powered by between 12 and 1500 watts of solar rated to 12 to 1500 watts which we estimate will be realistically probably an average of about 100 and, uh, 110 to 130 watts a day on average, uh, 100, uh, per hour that is. So day and night we'll have a lithium ion battery uh, bank. And uh, if all goes to plan, we should be able to move the finished boat at about four knots with 80 watts of energy. So hopefully we'll be able to keep it at an average of about 40 knots. That's what we're striving for. And that's in sort of average summer conditions with a mix of cloud and sun. And of course the solar panels have spray on them, everything else, so they're not gonna be working at their uh, maximum efficiency. So let's uh, go back up. 
like I said, this is just a mix and match of parts. It won't really be like this configuration at all. We've lifted the amas so they're not pushing too much in the water. In the final boat, the deck will actually come up much higher and the amas will be lower. So we're not going to need these lifters. Instead, it's just going to be more of a, a seamless transition going from the, uh, the deck to the akas and, uh, and then to the amas. So much smaller amas and the shape this is a, uh, a rowing shawl that we have the cambridge racer the shape of the central hull will be narrower and deeper so and uh so yeah this this prototype that we have here since this is actually just one of our rowing shawls it works out quite well so i'm just going to be inside it we're not checking we're not testing for any of the autonomous components yet the navigation that's still to be um uh developed right now we're just want to check out the overall uh, way that the hull and the appendages underwater uh, react in the different sea conditions. Today is a calm day because it's our first day out. Um, once we create the deck, uh, the large deck, we want to put that on before we do the rough water trial so we get a full idea of how the overall configuration will react in big wind and waves. We'll be taking the prototype out in very rough sea conditions to make sure it's all balanced and that it's going to perform as we want it to in rough weather. And then we're going to take everything we draw from that and put it into the final concept. Um, all the information, all the tweaking that we think needs doing, everything from the, uh, the, the underwater keel, and uh, we'll be incorporating two um, uh, very efficient uh, motor systems using brushless motors and uh, lithium ion battery bank. So, and then the navigation will be done with, we're gonna have a couple of microcontrollers controlling both the navigational elements. There'll be a little uh, uh, linear activator controlling the rudder. You can see right over here we've got the, uh, a little stick in the rudder. It'll be a similar system to this. This is the, the, uh, the tiller coming off the rudder itself. And basically it'll be shorter. There'll be a line going forward, very little uh, resistance in that. And the linear activator will be more in the center of the boat where it'll be less exposed to the uh, waves coming over. Um, at the same time, it'll be heavily protected. Uh, the, the navigation system is one of the most vulnerable components. Um, basically, if, if that steering mechanism, the, the physical hardware that's controlling the rudder gets water in it or breaks down, that's it, you're out of the race. So, uh, so hopefully everything will perform and basically make sure that we things do perform as we hope. We're going to do a lot of sea testing with the final product, the final boat, which we hope to have uh, completed in uh, late January.